All right, so you guys have heard me speak or introduce people and try to get you out of your seats for the last couple of days. Um, just a bit about me, so I'm a Texas-based Aussie performance marketer. I love SEO and I love search. Um, I'm a two-time SEMrush Award winner, so two of my campaigns that I designed and directed, one for a real estate client, the other for an e-commerce client, both won a SEMrush Award. Uh, 20 years in marketing, 10 years purely in performance marketing. I'm a multiple-time founder. Um, founder of Impressive Digital, which is the agency that uh, is media sponsored for this event. So we've got 120 staff across uh, four countries, Australia, US, we've got a team in Sri Lanka and a team in the Philippines. So basically, uh, you know, I know this stuff pretty well and I'm really keen to share what I know, but I also host a podcast series called Impressive, uh, sorry, it's called SEO Success Stories. So the learnings in this presentation are actually split from the stuff that I know and that I've put into SEO strategies myself and my team has done, but also from these people that I interview on this podcast. So we've had people from lots of really, really well-known brands. So they're actual practitioners who lead the SEO for IHOP, Vodafone, JLL. So people who are actually on it, not just talking about it, but actually doing it. And also just some amazing thought leaders and, and SEO educators from Ahrefs, SEMrush, SEO MBA, Shopify. So I've managed to pick the brains. One thing I love about the podcast is because I'm very curious about SEO. I know what I know and I know that I, there's a lot out there that I don't. So I get to pick their brains and what I've managed to do is synthesize that into 22 tips to grow your organic traffic this year. So it's actionable takeaways. I'll give everyone a copy of it afterwards. So feel free to take notes and take photos and the like, but you will get a copy of it anyway. But um, one thing so we talk about on the podcast, we talk about strategy, we talk about tactics, but you know, there's a, from a strategic perspective, and I just want to sort of touch on this a bit before I get into the 22, most people, when they think of SEOs, they think of, I oh, know I do, I did previously, you know, potentially like an introvert, someone who loves to code, who's, you know, huddled down at their desk, just burrowed away in deep, you know, deep into data and spreadsheets and that sort of thing. They've probably got their headphones on. They're the person that you just, you don't want to tap on the shoulder because you know they're in deep work. What we've found and what I found through my career and especially through, through this um, podcast is that soft skills are the biggest separator. So if you've got SEOs in-house, if you're working with agencies, consultants, whoever it is, you need to look really closely at their ability to manage other stakeholders. An SEO usually is a more of a consultative type role. They touch on web dev, content. They touch on technical. They touch on a range. They're talking to brand. They're talking to product. They want all this stuff done. They can come back with big, long lists of audits, bits and pieces. I'm going to give you 22 bits and pieces today. But actually having the rubber hit the road and making other teams or convincing other teams that this is an important thing for your business, that's where the soft skills come into play. And the world's best SEOs and the best agencies and consultants and in-house have got that ability to connect and grow trust and credibility within those really important stakeholders in your business. So I just want you to think about that with your current team because there might be someone in your team who is potentially way, way better with people and they're just sitting in the background and you've got someone really technical up front. If you really want to move the needle with your SEO, just think about those, those uh, soft skills. Now, we are short on time, so I've got a couple of videos which I'll play maybe one or two. That's Mateen Agar. He's the uh, head of SEO for Virgin Megastores globally. Um, just talking about how important it is to actually communicate why it is, why all these technical things are so important. If a couple more videos here, we might watch one more and then I'll, I really want to get stuck into the tips. But they really touch on the same thing each time. Building credibility and trust in customers. 
Has anyone seen that person before? Kate Turn. Do we have anyone who's into SEO? Like, oh, SEO is my thing. No, you probably don't know who that is then. So Kate Turn, she's uh, got a school called The Recipe for SEO Success. She's a globally known SEO educator. But again, it's building that trust, building that credibility with people so you can actually get stuff done. Now, I'm going to see if I can zoom through these. What is the okay. number one challenge facing SEOs in 2022? I love that question. Getting things done. I, I've been you know, doing SEO probably about 15, 16 years. We are advisors. We are not doers. There are a few of us that can program. There are a few of us that can write content. But ultimately, we're coming up with strategies and plans, and we can't get things done. And I'd say, like, whether you're in-house or a uh, consultant or a blogger, anything you are, you need to make things happen. You need people around you. And I think the biggest challenge is always you got a great plan. How do you get it? That plan to happen in a reasonable amount of time. That, I think, is the biggest challenge, getting things done, making things happen. Eli, Eli Swartz, he's got an, a book called Product-Led SEO. Very clever guy. You get, you get the, uh, the narrative I'm trying to push here. Soft skills, pretty sure this one will say the same thing again. And I ask that question every episode. So... Proving the value of those strategies. Okay, I think I've made my points. Oh, no, I haven't. There's one more. <laughs> okay, cool. Tactics are important. Uh, but, you know, oh, no, we've got another video here. My apologies. What is the number one biggest challenge that you guys face in 2022? Differentiate yourself. Cool, that is Steve Wiedemann, heads up SEO for Applebee's. So we did a great podcast with him around, if anyone here's got multi-locations, we talked about multi-location SEO, how that feeds into, you know, your rich, uh, rich information within your Google business profile. Okay, boom, we're here. 22 trips to grow your organic traffic in 2022. Um, so just straight up, this is kind of beginner to intermediate level. Uh, for given no one here is really passionate, it's probably closer to intermediate. Um, but uh, there should be some cool stuff here you can share with your teams and have them, you know, sort of apply or have a look at what you're doing currently with your sites. Um, most of this is broadly applicable, as I mentioned, but does slightly slant towards e-commerce. However, there's plenty of non-e-com tips in here. Now, with e-commerce sites, what's really important is we, as a as a kind of a with our best practice for e-commerce SEO, we split it into two different types of SEO. One being spec-based, really product-specific based, and the other one being design-based. And that's a really key criteria before we start building out an SEO program. We need to understand where does this particular product, this business and their product sit. So a spec-based is a, is a product-based, really product-heavy based um, type of SEO. So, for example, that could be a, a technology product, a laptop, um, something where people are actually very much searching for the brand, the model, the, you know, the capabilities. Those types of products, those types of e-commerce businesses need to have much more focus on those much more granular elements to the product because there's more search volume there, because the way people search for those is different. A design-based product is more like a fashion product Anything else where the focus is more on categories. So rather than, focus, rather than someone searching for a specific brand, which they might do, and then a model of that brand, it's more like a category. So it might be dresses, black dresses, black beauty dress. So once you've made that decision, you've made that distinction early on, that's going to really help inform then how you shape that strategy. It's really important. Uh, I'll be talking a bit about crawl budget as we make our way through. 
And crawl budget is basically the number of pages that, the, um, that Google's bots will crawl and index on your website in a given time frame. So I'll talk a bit about waste, crawl budget and the like, but that's what it is relevant to. Okay, let's get into it. 22 tips. Tip one for e-commerce. Prevent product page, dupl product page duplication by making sure that the product variants can canonicalize, canonicalize, canonicalize to the, uh, the base product URL. Okay, so an example of this is, let's just say it's a dress, right? It is this particular dress, which is a BB Dakota by Steve Madison sleeveless maxi dress. That's one product, but it comes in a range of different colors. When we talk about crawl budget, what we're saying is, What's most important to you is that anyone searching for that dress really lands on one of those pages. And then you're not optimizing each of those different colors and having each of those different colors eat up crawl budget, which you'd rather go to another product on your site or another category on your site. So you need to make a decision as to whether we canonicalize to maybe the base URL, which would end at max address there. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it would end at the max address or for someone like Nordstrom, they'd have a script written where it automatically canonicalizes to the product that they need to move. So if there's a product that's high in stock, low in stock, that they just need out, they'll have it automatically canonicalized to that product. So if someone does that search, it lands on one product, one page. It doesn't waste crawl budget across a range of different pages. For non-e-com, pretty similar thing. You know, content duplication on blog pages, Copyscape, is a really great tool that we use to see if there's um, any duplicated copy on your site. Anything that's sort of greater than 30% from external sources is, is a concern. So that's something I'd be looking at, you know, running your site, your blog pages through Copyscape and seeing if they are getting duplicated elsewhere. Tip two, prevent thin content. Uh, so making sure you've got two to 300 words of, of relevant content on all your category pages. So again, category pages rather than products. So this is design based. So it might be dresses, it could be shoes, it could be any type of product like that. But the thing is, I know lots of people think, well, two to 300 words on a category page, like no one's going to read that. If I open that on my mobile, I don't want all of that block of text there. Like that's going to affect the usability. Your design team, your product team are probably not going to be very happy with that. So just use an Arcadian. There's lots of plugins that do that on WordPress, Magento, Shopify, any of these types of platforms. With that read more, show less so that they need to click on it if they want to see it. Whether, it. whether they click on it or not, Google's bots will crawl it, they will index it, great, you get those keywords scraped and ranked, and you don't ruin that user experience. An example here, I'm not sure if you can see that, but just below the fold there is an option for them to read more. For non-e-com sites, uh, perform a landing page audit of the top three ranking sites to identify the need uh, for words on that page. So we, we've spoken about this and two or three of the other uh, speakers have spoken about using Google as a tool to figure out how, you know, what Google likes. So if you've got a particular product, go to Google, see who's ranking for that, have a look at the top three sites, get a feel for how many words Google likes. If it likes 400 words, 400 words, great. Keep it around 400, don't write 3,000 words. So Google's got the answers there. Um, you need to look at what it's already prioritizing. Tip three for e-com, uh, going deeper into categorization, if possible, to cater to audiences. So here I've got an example of coffee tables where you might categorize that further by color and then by material. Now, what I mentioned before around the canon canonicalizing and making sure that you are not wasting crawl budget, the, re the times you're doing this is when there is actually search volume that you do want to use that crawl budget on. We have got um, a recent example of this. We've got uh, some fitness, home fitness brands that we work with where we realized when we did our initial audit that there was a range, is that a question? No. <laughs> where there was a range of um, extra categories that they could have split their, their treadmills into, their ellipticals into. There was lots of search volume for other types of treadmills, ellipticals and the like. So we've gone through a process now of actually building out those, those category pages on their site to attract a whole heap more traffic through. Uh, same deal for non-e-com, you're just thinking services instead of products. So we've got an asset management client, uh, they just had an asset management page, which had a range of different services on it, but there is actual search volume around asset planning, asset forecasting, asset procurement. 
So it's that keyword research which comes back and informs whether we've got an opportunity to flesh out those category pages. And there is an example of a fashion site with a lot of um, different categories that obviously have search volume they want to be optimizing for. Tip four, so I'm, I'm zipping through this quite quick. I will send this afterwards. I'm just sort of conscious of time. Tip four, uh, Cool Web Vitals. Last speaker just spoke about it, Craig. It's really important. You can use PageSpeed Insights. It's a free tool online and actually see how your site is going for that. It'll tell you whether you pass or fail and it'll actually give you a list of the, um, the issues on your page you need to fix. That is a Google ranking factor as of last year. Mobile page speed is critical. Again, page speed insights, use it. That'll tell you where the holdups are on your site. Okay, tip six, dig, dive deep into Google Search Console. Now, someone asked yesterday, one of the speakers asked who, is, who has Google Search Console. And given we don't have any people here who are specifically passionate or day-to-day -day in SEO, I'm assuming you don't log in, but you wanna make sure that your team, your techs, your consultants, your agency, are regularly in there, regularly in there, and are looking for things like what's my split split of brand and non-branded traffic? How what am I doing to optimize for that non-branded traffic, for that branded traffic? It also gives you lots of uh, really cool information around any technical issues that your site is currently experiencing. Lastly, it'll let you know if uh, if a landing page has been launched and you want to get it indexed. So yesterday there was some talk around Father's Day, which is coming up. When is Father's Day? Is that really coming up soon? Does anyone know? June. Okay, cool. In Australia, it's in September. So, okay, June. So, if you've got a particular promotion or a campaign you're going to run around Father's Day and you want to get that page up, you probably run some paid traffic to it. But if you want it to show up organically as well, jump into Google Search Console, let Google know this page needs to be indexed. This is a really important page for us. So, that's something you can um, use Google Search Console for as well. Tip seven high quality internal filters, just to make it easier for people to search for particular products. Just make sure when we talk about that canonicalizing, make sure that those filters with those weird URLs that have question marks and all sorts of things in them are not canonicalized. You don't want to waste your crawl budget on those filter pages, but you do want to give your users a, uh, a good experience. So that's the example there. Fashion's just the easiest to show this because it's kind of straightforward. But you can see there the different filters there. What we want, what we don't want, is when someone clicks on that, that URL is canonicalized, and we ask, we're asking Google to rank it. Tip eight. I'm talking a lot about crawl budget. The reason for that is most sites just waste a heap of crawl budget on pages that really don't need to be indexed and ranked. And then they're really important pages, whether they're transacting pages, whether they're informational pages, navigational pages which drive really good traffic through to transactional pages aren't getting indexed. This is another one. Make sure that your blog tag pages. So if you've got a blog, if you've got some kind of knowledge base and you have tags in there that help people use those filters to search for them, don't let those tag pages be indexed. Templatizing meta titles and descriptions. Um, a speaker yesterday spoke a bit about this and, and Craig who was just on spoke about Jarvis, which is great as well. So those are really good tools, but for efficiency's sake, it's really good to have a best practice idea of what your meta titles and descriptions need to look like. How long has that been down? Just this slide? Okay, that's not so bad. Um, Cool, it's just text at the moment, so I might just move forward because I'm conscious of time. Feel free to throw your hand up if what I'm saying doesn't make sense because you can't see it there. Um, tip 10 is to make the product pages more information rich. So whether this be a product page or a service page, but FAQs are amazing, like they're so good for, for getting your content up on your site for Google to crawl and index. Um, pros and cons, how-to guides, videos, testimonials. The more information you can get in those pages, more for Google to call an index, and it's much more like people actually search.